if you want to do cool scrimshaw like this, but you're not quite sure which tools to use or what techniques to use, come to the right place because we're going to show you how in this video. Welcome to Stockman Original. I'm Max Ledoux. This is Brian Stockman, the original. And Brian's going to show you and me how to do some scrimshaw techniques and which tools to use. Yeah, I've been doing scrimshaw for, oh my lord, um, 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> Since you were uh -huh. three years old. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been doing it for a long, long time. You can do all of this stuff if you want, like, um, an X-Acto knife, you know, they're pretty accessible for everybody. And those make very good um, cuts for Scrimshaw um, for a beginning, you know, I mean, people wouldn't probably have a, a kit of tools like what I've accumulated over the last 40 or so years um, to play with. And when I first started carving, Exacto was my go-to tool. I liked doing pen and ink drawings when I was even younger. <laughs> and so the idea of doing them on bone or ivory or anything mm -hmm. like that, well, I just thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I've always loved the, the Inuit art mm -hmm. and I've always loved the, um, the New England whalers. Mm -hmm. Scrimshaw. Today, I've, we started doing the, the powder horn, but I wanted to jump back and uh, go over these different tools just on a, like a technical mm -hmm. end of things. I've got a, uh, a piano key, <laughs> which were ivory back in the day mm -hmm. and it, uh, you know, ebony and ivory. Um, so yeah, I've got a scale glued onto this board just so I don't have to hold it to hurt. Uh, and these are worn. So I'm going to sand it down and it's, it's a pretty quick um, operation for that. A lot of times, like if you're going to do bone or, or something raw from mm -hmm. nature, you, there's a lot more prep work, but these are pretty smooth to begin with. So using 220 to start, because like I said, it's already kind of smooth enough, but I just want to get any scratches and uh, problems out of the way. These always help nowadays. Now I got some 400. Elf this, the piano key ivories are always elephant ivory, which should be hard to get, hopefully. Um, the 400 made short order of cleaning up the 220 and then the, I used four, four steel wool to do the final preparation here. So what I'm going to do is paint the whole surface black with some India ink. You're doing that before you make any scratches. Yeah. Since this is just a, uh, this is like a sampler to um, show you the different tools and what they do. It'll show up, everything will show up really nice. So we've got our little piece of ivory. Um, if you ever hear about somebody throwing a piano away, you ought to check, if you're interested in this sort of thing, of course, check and make sure that the, these aren't getting thrown away. Uh, you can do so many things with them. Before I start scratching on, on this piece of ivory, I wanted to show you, uh, try to show you the tools. Um, this one here is a round point scribe. Uh, could be compared to a sail needle, which is what a lot of times uh, the guys were using for scrimshaw on board the whaling boats. Uh, so it's just a, it's a round needle type point. Very, very sharp you know you gotta hone them and keep after them, make sure they're cutting clean same sort of deal with this you need it sharp but this is triangular which um cuts a different slightly different type of line i made this tool oh my lordy back in 79 i've been using it ever since it's made out of a, a file and uh i was when i 
ground this down. I was careful. I kept my finger on the metal. Um, and when it got too hot to handle, I'd quench it. Mm. And because you don't, you want to keep the temper in it, keep it hard. All right. So that's that. This is, I have several sizes of these. This is a, just a straight chisel. Uh, you can see it's got a chisel grind on it and it's uh, quite small but this is the biggest of the th ones that i use all of these are uh, made from jewelers files they're all you know very hard steel and those are the different sizes uh these two are getting to be about the same size uh, it's funny how you as you grind <laughs> away they get into the thicker pieces but anyhow love the feel of bone antler ivory all that so i like um my handles i make out of antler as well or bone this one's made out of walrus tusk i was in alaska when i made it so that it was a fairly available in the right circles it has a magical opal kind of a look to it walrus yeah, I guess. tusk and then i've got little hawkbill kind of knife that works very nice for straight lines and so forth. Oh, here's another one that I, I use uh, quite a lot. It's like a burn or a graver. It's triangular, but it's the end that's clipped off at a slight angle that does the work. It, you use, you know, you use it like a plow, you know, that way. So I'm going to put these guys to work. I'm not planning on making anything terribly pretty. <laughs> it's a sampler <laughs> so i want to show you what the different tools will do and how to use them so say uh you want a nice fine straight edge this tracks nicely for straight edges and and things like that but you can see maybe a nice fine edge mm -hmm. and perhaps i'll i will doodle it a little bit i'm going to go around the edge like a border so a lot of times you'd need a, a straight edge to guide you on that um, sort of a thing. But because it tracks so nicely, it just cuts pretty straight. What would it, can you see a line around that? Yep. Okay, good. So that's a nice, fine, straight border line. And, and that would be the, the tool to use for such a thing. Now, I'm going to show you what... <clears throat> I do with the chisel. I guess different people call it different things, but walking engraving or rocker engraving. So you plant the chisel wherever you want it and you literally rock it back and forth and it walks across the surface. Oh yeah. You see this a lot in older pieces. Okay. This is a great tool for filling in large dark areas. Say you want to do, say you do a carving of a puffin mm -hmm. and you, you polish it all up and now you're going to scrimshaw it. So you could take the, the, um, the knife, the hawkbill knife there and outline your areas that want to be black. And then you take and, and fill it in this you know with the walking engraving i was told by a guy in alaska if you perfect that rocking engraving technique you can make a lot of money <laughs> i'm still waiting <laughs> <laughs> but anyway you can see how it's yeah. filling in what remember what is white here will be black and uh also just so that you know you can exaggerate do a John Wayne uh -huh. walk, swagger, and you end up with a nice yeah. zigzag. So basically, this tool and this tool and the other chisel. Chisel grinds are ground on one side. When you have a chisel that is ground on both sides, they call that a knife edge. I just uh, used this technique on my last turkey call. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a great material if you can get 
if you know anybody that hunts uh, turkeys in particular, uh, these calls are made from the, I think we've already talked about it on another, on another uh, show, episode, whatever, but they're made from the wing bones of a turkey. And you can see down in, in the tail here, I did a banding with the um, chisel, and then I used a finer one up here, did um, more of it. But anyway, this bone, I've really only recently started playing with, and it works really nice it's it's as fun to work on as a whale's tooth to tell you the truth and a whole lot less controversial <laughs> <laughs> well whale's teeth getting hard to come by as they should be so anyway those are the chisels now uh the triangular point is good for doing your curved lines with pretty good control. That you wouldn't want to try to do with that little knife that I started with. And it's, is that because the knife would dig down too deep? It tracks. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a sled. Um, this tracks too. You can, you, can, um, you can do straight lines with this too. See, I'm laying one edge down mm -hmm. on the, towards the ivory and using that to and it it cuts a nice straight line as well but because it goes to a point and you have three sides you, you carefully you can make the tight curves the thing that i use the triangular point for the most is dots points bk uh. so because it's got three sides and it's sharp when you spin it it actually cuts in a hole <clears throat> so what i've done here i put a series of dots down that curved line and transformed it into an old-timey um, symbol for porcupine that represents the tracks of a porcupine in the snow because they drag their tail and they waddle. So the tail goes back and forth and they're... Mm -hmm. they're theater. Yeah. So the natives would use a, a design like that in their artwork. So anyway, the triangular point is great for, for doing that, um, those little dots. Now, the round one is good for when I really have to do a lot of curve mm -hmm. cuts and so forth that I use it because it's it doesn't have a flat side to, that will catch and track it'll do just about what you want it to do so if I want tight little curls or from signing my name or something like that um, I can use this now this won't you can't drill a hole with this like you can with the triangular point but you, Why not? well because it doesn't have flat sides it has no cutting edges that will keep removing oh, material right, right yeah i mean you, you can would be just kind of poking a, it'd be like a, yeah you, like a needle almost but. you could spin it and everything and it's it produces a, a point a hole um much smaller i think you could unless this was like on a bow drill or a hand, you know, a power drill or something, mm -hmm. you might burn your way through something, but it's not cutting a hole. So it will only give you so big of a hole. But what I use this for a lot is pointing for shading and so mm -hmm. forth, which I can show you an example. The head of the turkey is actually shaded by that. And, uh, and if you've got a bit of a, a tremor to your hand, <laughs> it works really well. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause you don't hit the same place all the time. <laughs> yeah. This won't show up no, until it? I ink it. It's a great way to shade in a, an area and for shading, if you're familiar with pen and ink drawing, fine line drawing or anything like that, most of those same rules apply. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can uh, cross hatching. Cross hatching, yeah. And then, of course, we go the other way, darkens it.
this um, when you cross hatching you don't want your lines to converge on one another and do all this sort of thing unless it's a technique that you're trying to do you want them to be as close together as possible but parallel to each other and that's why you'd want a blade that tracks application for the round tipped one like if i'm gonna do uh trees in the distance i'd uh i'd probably go for this blade I love it's working. Like a, huh? It looks like a happy little tree. Yeah, it's turning into a happy little tree. I'll put a happy little cloud over here. Um, of course, that tree might be lonely. Oh, I could make another one. I've always enjoyed working in miniature and <laughs> tiny. Mm -hmm. And Scrimshaw is a great avenue for that. So yeah, anyway, there's a happy little tree. This is one I haven't gone, that, gone with yet the little burn plow kind of thing use that like i say pushing it like this and it too tracks pretty nice for straight in fact you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to do curves i mean you could do gentle curves with it mm -hmm. if you're careful great for straight lines do you notice that it's much bolder mm -hmm. line yeah i can see that yeah is that because it's wider yeah the way it cuts it's actually plowing through mm -hmm. where this isn't really removing any material it's, it's just kind of, yeah that's actually scraping removing it is it is and in cut is just opening a cut yeah, yeah. And certain materials respond well to that like ivories uh and certain bones horn doing cow horn and things like that don't always work out they have like threads yeah real yeah. fibrous stuff yeah. if you're doing a, a a ship you could use this for doing some of the rigging but some of the rigging wants to be heavier than others mm -hmm. uh, other lines want to be fine so you you'd use uh, your knife type of deal can't really think of anything else to put on it <clears throat> other than smink. <laughs> See what it looks like. What have we done? So again, normally you would have done that without putting down the, the black first. Not necessarily. I like okay. if I'm doing a whale's tooth or something like that, I'll paint it black. Okay. Because it because it makes it easier for you to track what you've done because there's a yeah. Contrast. The trade-off is it makes it hard to see a pencil line mm -hmm. uh, when it's blackened, but if you hold it in the light, you can see the uh, pencil line shine silver ag against the black. And it's always a little nerve-wracking getting your basic outlines down so that everything's where it's supposed to be. Once you do that, then you then it's golden because mm -hmm. you can see it real good and you can go in and do all the detail and, and shading and all that other stuff. But like when I'm doing the turkey calls and things like mm -hmm. that, I didn't see what I had laid down until I was done with it. And then I inked it. And I did that so that I could do my doodling with the pencil and I could see that. And mm -hmm. you're always shining it in the, you know, in the sunlight or whatever light you got to see what you've done or where you're going and what you need to do. It's a little inconvenient in that sense. It's not like working with paper, but I like the end result. So <laughs> So yeah, it looks like it's all inked in good. And I'll go back over it. Okay, that's, that's that. Hopefully you can see. Of, um, because saying, uh, there's the cloud that, um, the pecking that I did, you can mm -hmm. see, it's like a teeny tiny swarm of bees. So that's with the round. Then you got, of course, your, your chisel point, doing all of these various size chisels. Your, your burn right there. Mm -hmm. It's a real bold line. Yeah. The fine lines around the edges of that and your cross hatching you can see, you know, down here, it's got three directions. So it's darker, gets a little lighter and it's lighter yet. And, um, and then the round again for doing your, your sketching and so forth. But that's pretty much the basics on, uh, on the tools 
of Scrimshaw.